What was the primary vision or uh, intent of CanWeb TV? The primary intent of CanWeb TV was to, uh, to offer something different that uh, you could have local programming and also international programming on it. Like what I initially thought was that uh, you could have, a, instead of having local cable stations, you could have a, um, uh, a CanWeb TV station in each locale. So that you could uh, you could get you know um, the school ball games on it. You could get local issues, um, neighborhood issues, uh, broadcasts so that everybody would know about it. Um, there would be uh, the issue that uh, you would know what's going on in the city, and not just by the the press that's regulated, but by like open people saying you know straight up things. And the idea was that uh, we'd have a can web in each city, but uh, as it worked out, we didn't, we didn't go that far. Oh, so there was a bigger market, like a, a global market. It's not just heard here. It's not just heard here in Canada. It's not just heard in Hamilton. It's heard all over the world, and it has the possibility to be heard all over the world. There's um, there's a company that came out, and uh, uh, they call themselves the Wayback Machine. And now you can go in and you can look at uh, old websites and old things that have come on the internet. They uh, um, supposedly they have millions of terabytes of, of information that you can go back in the Wayback Machine and, and take a look. And information, knowledge, etc., is power. A lot of times governments and a lot of times uh, even local governments don't want you to know what's really going on, so they can control society, control the crowd, control their local population. And with internet broadcasting, you can't do that because it's unregulated at, as of yet. It's still unregulated. And uh, when something does go out, it doesn't just go out in your local community, it goes out all over the world. And so internet broadcasting, the regulations are coming. Um, there's already Senate committees meeting on this. and um, Let's see, wow, it's over 10 years ago. Over 10 years ago, they didn't think that, uh, you know, like we'd be receiving internet TV on cell phones. Um, and it wouldn't be, like, all over the place as it is now. So now it's even more threatening because of the information that's being, that's being transmitted. And it's unregulated, so that means that uh, you can say basically whatever you want to say. And it can be true, it can be false. But for the majority, it's, it's a lot of truth that's trying to get out there that couldn't get out there before because of the regulations. Do you think that was unfortunate? Well, the market was definitely created with internet television where um, people could do their own like backyard TV productions and things like that. Like, um, you know, you wanted to see yourself on, on the internet or you wanted, to see, you wanted other people to see you. It became a tool for the media that, um, you know, a lot of comics, comics got discovered, uh, many people have been discovered through YouTube. Um, there was a, uh, a video that was put on YouTube, uh, you know, like Gungam style, got millions and millions of hits, people watching it, because it was, it was funny, it was alive, and uh, it was something very creative. Well, in, uh, in the olden days, you had, to, um, you had to pretty much beg, borrow, and steal, or do whatever you, you could to get airplay for your video, or to get airplay for your song on the radio. Well, now with this internet, there is no beg borrowing and doing whatever. It's you can pop it on there and then people watch it. Like uh, they find it. Different places like Media Channel will pick it up, um, YouTube, many different uh, organizations, and you get instant celebrity status almost. So, uh, with all the restrictions and commercials and etc., um, com complicating videos is is that a major threat? Like. I, I would think that like that would totally like kind of null down your videos. I, I, is that a problem? Because uh, I, from from what I've seen, YouTube does that so much, like always, with all the all the commercials and videos and stuff. It is it, just it, it makes things almost nonsense. Well, YouTube has changed. When YouTube first went up, they didn't have uh, two sections of YouTube. They just had one YouTube. Now they have two sections. Two sections are for regular, and the, the other section is for adult. Like you actually have to sign in and, and provide your name and your your birth date that you're over 18 or 19 years old. And you can go into the 
adult section. The adult section is pretty much unrestricted. So, realistically, the only difference between uh, CanWeb and YouTube is with YouTube you can upload spontaneously. Well, no, CanWeb, uh, CanWeb, we took a look at different things and stuff like that, and we weren't going to um, have a product that, that we put out there that was going to have liability issues. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it worked out that we were okay with that. Didn't have any problems. Uh, there wasn't anybody screaming at us. It was we did our own self-regulation. Why Canada? Why call it CanWeb TV? Because CanWeb was Canadian uh, web television. It, it was developed in Canada, all right. And uh, I thought that uh, Canada should get the recognition as to this is where it was developed. This is where it was started. It wasn't started in USA, so we didn't call it USA. Web TV or you know Australian Web TV or something like that. This actually started here in Canada, so it's Canadian Web Television. Um, realistically, it could be anywhere in the world it could have started, but it started here because I'm the originator. Do you feel any regret that the Canadian government did not um, believe in or support your project? Throughout history, Canada has not been noted exactly as being entrepreneurial. Like um, the latest biggest venture uh, that that I'm aware of. In Canada was uh, uh, Research in Motion out of Kitchener, um, also known as Blackberry. And, um, you know, that was a very big entrepreneurial thing. And it was not even funded by Canadians. Canadians put it together, but um, when it came right down to it, it was funded by people out of the country. Um, Canadians don't seem to support their own very much. They're not like Americans, they're not uh, patriotic. They're more of a passive and, you know, like, uh, sort of almost like a doubting Thomas out of the Bible. And, you know, they, they doubt their own fellow man instead of supporting and, you know, saying, yeah, okay, uh, this, is a, this is a great thing, let's, let's move on, let's help it out. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell was uh, another, uh, another issue as well. Like, you, uh, you look at Alexander Graham Bell, uh, he started his development of the telephone right here. Canada, um, in Brantford, Ontario, and they have a monument to them, they have uh, some of the other things in the museum there, um, all, all for Alexander Graham Bell, but in reality, he may have developed the telephone here, may have tried to, to sell the idea, what have you, but it actually, he had to take it to uh, Washington, D.C., which is in the States, and it had to go from there. It didn't, uh, it didn't fly here in Canada. But the Americans grabs the idea and they said, yeah, this will work, you know. And there's a lot of different things that uh, have happened. And, you know, it was developed here in Canada and then it was actually produced in the States because Canadians couldn't get their heads around it. Does that mean Canada is not entrepreneurial? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to knock Canada about, you know, not backing entrepreneurs and things like that. Um, I was actually uh, watching a show, they have uh, two shows now, called, one called Shark Tank and the other one called um, Dragon's Den and it's to help entrepreneurs but in reality um, the entrepreneurs are there and they're, you know, they're making their business and they're doing things but in order to, to get the help uh, from these, uh, whether it be uh, from the Shark Tank uh, show or the Dragon's Den they have to give huge percentages of their companies that they worked hard for and, uh, you know, they, uh, they come up with the ideas and all that themselves. They have to give up the huge percentages just to go forward. And, um, well, that's likely the same in the States. Why did you choose music for the first worldwide launch? Music is universal. And uh, the reason why we interviewed uh, Stylers as, as part of our first um, genre for the, the first episode of, of Can Web, like the, right off the start, is music. So, so music's everywhere, right? Yeah, music's everywhere. Yes, it's got to be everywhere. Like it's it's it's, it's the thing. It's well, like a choice, it really. It is. And um, hip hop is is pretty much the largest audience right now. Of youth is involved in hip hop. Um, the younger the people, it seems, as though the more they address technology. And it would be younger people who, at that time, and, and still till now, it's younger people who are addressing technology and are looking at it and looking at different things and, and accepting of new ways. They're more um, 
malleable to accepting new ways and new things. Whereas uh, people that are older, they aren't that interested in accepting things. And uh, music is, is, like I said, music is a universal turnkey. Everyone likes music. Even, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of funny. I, I remember um, some of the 50 Cent stuff that came out and that big hit In the Club came out. And I was at this, uh, uh, this golf and country club in Burlington. And I heard it come on and here's all these seniors, people 65 and up, and they're, they're dancing to In the Club. Music is universal, it, and uh, hip hop seems to be uh, uh, appealing to almost all ages now. But in the beginning, it was it was pretty much just youth, and youth is who would embrace new technology. Do they have the rights for the actual list? Is this an independent source outside from local media? Yeah, Media Channel is uh, is out of the states. It has nothing to do with us in Canada, and. Um, they, uh, they rated us. Uh, I can't remember how many emails I was getting for, uh, for interest, for advertising in channels and all that kind of stuff. And um, right now, I think it was three days ago, there was a, a release about Google Advertising. Google Advertising is, uh, is the leader in advertising of all the, uh, um, the people that are doing internet broadcasting right now. And they're internet, uh, just the commercial sales, like the commercials, are topping $19 billion a month. I noticed this list has Yahoo and QuickTime on it. Yes, QuickTime is Apple Computer. Yeah, those are some pretty billionaire companies. It's Apple Computer, the same as uh, Apple Computer, which is iPhones, it's uh, um, not just iPhones, iPads, iTouch. I have a list right here which states CanWeb was the first on Media Channel. What put, uh, what put us in first with all the other channels that Media Channel was monitoring was not just that we were live streaming, but also that um, it was a product that people wanted to see. Like, it wasn't how you get to be first is they're not monitoring, well, okay, you know, they're doing live streaming, so they're going to be first. No, it's how many people are actually coming to the site to watch the live streaming or to look at the downloads and make a download or, or whatever. So we were getting the highest amount of hits or highest amount of people or volume coming or traffic coming to the site for people to watch and that's how we became number one. It's not, uh, it's not just because we did live streaming. CanWeb was first place? There was no buffering, it was just download period. So I guess CanWeb preceded YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, Ken would definitely proceed to YouTube. Uh, one, Can Web TV, two, Movie TV. Three, Yahoo Broadcast. Four, SilverSow.com. Sorry, SilverSow.com. Five, Like Television. Six, Cinema Pop. Seven, Zero One Films. Eight, Quick Time Channels. Nine, Keen TV. Ten, NetBroadcaster.com.